An excess of power or wealth can corrupt the soul and character of any person. But when it comes to the politicians and leaders, it becomes drastically more terrifying for significant reasons. Today, you'll see backdoor deals and a Texas-sized dose of political intrigue. This is the untold story of the most corrupt president in U.S. history. So, let's get started. Lyndon Baines Johnson, a figure of profound contradiction, emerged as possibly the most tragic president in American history. His legacy, marked by spectacular accomplishments and a simultaneous downfall, was a narrative akin to Greek tragedy. Johnson's conscientious enactment of the historic 1964 Civil Rights Act and 1965 Voting Rights Act stood as a tribute to his commitment to justice as the first president from the Deep South since the Civil War. However, this commitment propelled the South into the Republican Party's embrace for generations. Hailing from humble beginnings in Texas, Johnson's resentment towards the moneyed Eastern establishment lingered throughout his life, yet he never abandoned the impoverished. His philanthropic endeavors included teaching school to Mexican immigrants, a haunting experience that fueled his commitment to addressing the plight of the underprivileged. Despite these virtues, Johnson's flaws were intertwined with his strengths, creating a narrative where he couldn't escape his tragic fate. Exiting the White House as a pariah, Johnson was despised by his party, with American society teetering on the brink of collapse. His story remains a poignant reminder of the complexities within leadership, where even the noblest intentions can lead to unintended consequences. Johnson, an astute Texan politician, revered the great progressive Franklin Roosevelt as his political hero. Johnson thrived in the tumultuous arena of Texas politics, where the rules were as unpredictable as the wind. Ballots were forged, the deceased cast votes early and often, and political alliances were formed, shattered, and resurrected in the blink of an eye. His contested triumph in the 1948 Senate race, allegedly marred by fraud and secured by 87 votes, earned him the moniker Landslide Linden, a title he embraced enthusiastically. A towering and imposing figure, Johnson had held a prominent position as one of U.S. history's most influential majority leaders. However, his political trajectory significantly turned when John F. Kennedy selected him as his running mate at the 1960 Democratic Convention. Despite liberal shock at Kennedy's choice of a man perceived by many as a typical Southern politician, conservative, segregationist, and seemingly at odds with the Democratic labor base, Kennedy understood the strategic importance of winning Southern support. Kennedy's foresight proved prescient as the duo secured a narrow victory over Vice President Richard Nixon. Johnson, once the powerhouse of the Democratic Party in Washington, found himself relegated to a neglected and underutilized role within the Kennedy administration. Despite the challenges and shifts in his political fortunes, Johnson's journey from landslide Lyndon to the vice presidency marked a pivotal chapter in American political history. Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ, possessing an intricate understanding of the legislative process, could have played a pivotal role in advancing President Kennedy's new frontier agenda. However, despite his potential contributions, Johnson's gruff Texan demeanor and aggressive stance on foreign policy created discord within the sophisticated ranks of the administration's Eastern Establishment inner circle. Johnson's reputation as a political hustler further complicated his relationship with the Kennedy administration. He accumulated wealth during his government tenure and faced scrutiny for perceived ethical lapses. Two weeks before Kennedy's tragic assassination, Life magazine unveiled a detailed expose on Johnson's connections to former aide Bobby Baker. The revelations included serious allegations ranging from influence peddling through bribery to orchestrating sexual favors in exchange for congressional votes and government contracts. The contrast between Johnson's pragmatic legislative expertise and the refined ethos of Kennedy's associates underscored the complexity of their collaboration. While Johnson could have offered invaluable assistance in realizing Kennedy's policy objectives, the misalignment of personalities and the shadow of scandal created a challenging dynamic within the highest echelons of American politics. This tension foreshadowed the intricate political landscape after Kennedy's assassination and Johnson's ascension to the presidency. Amidst the cloud of suspicion surrounding Russian involvement in the JFK assassination and Lee Harvey Oswald's communist sympathies, President Lyndon B. Johnson swiftly convened the Warren Commission. Tasked with dispelling doubts about foul play and conspiracy, the bipartisan panel released findings asserting Oswald's lone involvement. 
However, this rush to judgment only fueled decades of speculation, invoking theories involving the Mafia, rogue CIA agents, right-wing Texans, and even implicating Johnson himself. In private reflections later in life, LBJ admitted a belief that Castro might have orchestrated Kennedy's demise before the president could act against him. Despite such assertions, a consensus on the truth of the tragic event remains elusive. While intimately familiar with the legislative process, Johnson's brash Texan demeanor and assertive foreign policy stance clashed with the refined sensibilities of the administration's eastern establishment. Despite his potential to assist in advancing Kennedy's new frontier agenda, Johnson's reputation as a political hustler amassing wealth during his government tenure further complicated his legacy. Two weeks before Kennedy's assassination, Life Magazine's expose on Johnson's connections to former aide Bobby Baker heightened controversies. Allegations of influence peddling through bribery and orchestrating sexual favors for congressional votes and government contracts added another layer of complexity to LBJ's political narrative. As history unfolds, the enigma surrounding Lyndon B. Johnson's role in the JFK assassination and his broader political legacy continues to captivate scholars and conspiracy theorists alike. Johnson found himself in a precarious position, acutely aware of the skepticism surrounding his presidency as he grappled with the perception of being a usurper. Seeking to foster continuity after President Kennedy's tragic assassination, Johnson pleaded with Kennedy veterans to retain their positions in his cabinet. Eager to honor Kennedy's memory, LBJ prioritized enacting the stalled legislative agenda left behind. Amidst a nation still grieving, he strategically pushed for a vote on Kennedy's proposed tax cut, entangled in committee negotiations due to attempts to leverage it against civil rights legislation. Following the successful passage of the tax bill, Johnson doubled down on his commitment to civil rights by championing Kennedy's civil rights bill. The Senate witnessed fierce opposition as opponents launched a filibuster, requiring Republican support for an override. In a pivotal moment, Johnson engaged in robust lobbying efforts with GOP leader Everett Dirksen, ultimately securing enough votes to ensure the bill's passage. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Bill in July 1964. However, a sad note accompanied the achievement, as he purportedly remarked that its passage would cost the Democrats the South for a generation. Little did Johnson anticipate the magnitude of the seismic shift that had set in motion. The legislation marked a turning point in American history, significantly advancing civil rights and reshaping political alliances in ways that would redefine the political landscape for years. Known for his towering stature at six foot four, Lyndon B. Johnson wielded legendary persuasive skills, often employing physical intimidation to sway his listeners. His repertoire of tactics ranged from reasoning and pleading to outright threats and tearful begging, all in pursuit of manipulating votes according to his desires. This unique approach led to unparalleled legislative achievements, rivaling even the New Deal. In the subsequent year, Johnson's Great Society initiatives bore fruit with groundbreaking acts like the Food Stamps Act, VISTA, a domestic peace corps, and Head Start program, an ambitious war on poverty. Eager to solidify his legitimacy, Johnson directed his energies toward securing a substantial victory in the upcoming election. Facing Senator Barry Goldwater, who denounced Kennedy's proposals as socialist ploys, Johnson's landslide triumph validated his leadership. With a Democratic majority in Congress, he continued his legislative hunger in 1965, passing significant bills such as Kennedy's Medicare, an affirmative action law, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Clean Air Act, and the 1965 Voting Rights Act, a monumental achievement hailed by Martin Luther King Jr. as a second emancipation upon its passage in the summer of 1965. During the 1964 presidential campaign, President Johnson initiated a significant escalation of the United States military presence in Vietnam. In August of that year, the USS Maddox allegedly faced an attack from North Vietnamese boats in the Gulf of Tonkin. Astonishingly, no casualties occurred, and the incident remained unreported to President Johnson and his administration. However, just two days later, reports of a second attack surfaced, prompting the Johnson administration to capitalize on the situation. Using the alleged second attack in the Gulf of Tonkin as a pretext, the administration sought congressional authorization for unrestricted presidential action against any communist aggression in Vietnam. 
The flaw in this plan emerged when widespread claims suggested that one or both of the supposed attacks of the USS Maddox never actually happened. Despite these doubts, President Johnson addressed the nation on television, asserting the reality of the attacks and justifying the need for decisive action. Consequently, there are doubts regarding the integrity of the events preceding the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution and the United States' subsequent increased engagement in the Vietnam War, given that the most destabilizing foreign conflict in American history probably began under suspicious circumstances. The question of why President Johnson escalated the U.S. involvement in Vietnam has sparked various theories. At its core, the most straightforward explanation points particularly at the hands of the NSA and the caption of the USS Maddox. However, a deeper analysis suggests Johnson's actions were driven by a desire to flex his political muscles. Examining Johnson's track record reveals a pattern of hawkish tendencies. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, he aligned himself with those advocating for attacks on Cuba. Furthermore, he openly opposed Kennedy's plan to withdraw US troops from Vietnam, potentially fueled by sheer hubris. In the broader context of Cold War politics, Johnson's mindset was shaped by three decades of U.S. policy towards Soviet expansionism characterized by containment. Yet, the situation in Vietnam differed significantly from past conflicts, being more of a struggle for reunification under the Communist North against the corrupt government in the South. The turning point came during the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964. Alleged attacks that were uncharacterized provided Johnson with a pretext for escalating military involvement. However, subsequent doubts emerged about the authenticity of these attacks, suggesting that the most destabilizing foreign war in American history potentially began under pretenses. Johnson's decision-making, driven by a mix of ignorance, political posturing, and a Cold War mindset had far-reaching consequences for the trajectory of the Vietnam War and his Great Society vision. In the summer of 1966, as President Lyndon B. Johnson grappled with the complexities of the Vietnam War, external forces converged to intensify his challenges. LBJ's reluctance to fully commit troops to combat roles, driven by a deep-seated fear of potential nuclear escalation involving China or Russia, only served to fortify North Vietnamese determination to handle peace talks independently. However, events beyond Johnson's control unfolded, further complicating a tumultuous period. The Watts Ghetto of Los Angeles became a focal point for racial unrest, erupting in riots that foreshadowed similar urban rebellions in Detroit, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. The summer of 66 marked the genesis of a counterculture fueled by drugs and dissent that emerged in stark opposition to what it perceived as a corrupt conventional society. Simultaneously, protests against the Vietnam War gained momentum globally, with college campuses becoming hotbeds of dissent. Draft age students symbolically burned their selective service cards, signaling a growing resistance of the war effort. The cultural landscape underwent a seismic shift, epitomized by mantras like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and Timothy Leary's famous call to turn on, tune in, drop out. The Beatles' groundbreaking album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, resonated as the anthem for the burgeoning hippie counterculture. In the face of these multifaceted challenges, Lyndon B. Johnson found himself entangled in a web of crises that would define the summer of 1966 and contribute to the enduring complexities of the Vietnam War era. The reaction to this social upheaval was swift. In liberal California, the popular governor, Pat Brown, faced defeat at the hands of a right-wing underlying Barry Goldwater, an unlikely figure, a B-movie actor named Ronald Reagan. Across the nation, the Republican Party, once thought to be dormant, experienced a resurgence. Simultaneously, an anti-war faction emerged within the Democratic Party, led by Robert Kennedy, now a senator from New York. Kennedy posed a significant threat to President Johnson's hold on the party's 1968 nomination. Johnson, facing the unrest and discontent, grew increasingly paranoid. He attributed the war protests to communists, the Eastern establishment, and Kennedy loyalists. The societal fabric seemed to be unraveling, and the middle class, traditionally a stronghold for the Democratic Party, began to shift blame onto Johnson. The prolonged Vietnam War, coupled with the escalating turmoil, fueled the discontent. The turning point came with the Tet Offensive in February 1968, where the North Vietnamese Army overran much of South Vietnam. The esteemed CBS newscaster Walter Cronkite 
questioned the war's winnability on air. Recognizing the significance, Johnson commented, If I've lost Cronkite, I've lost Middle America. Johnson's darkest worries came to light when Robert Kennedy declared his intention to challenge him for the Democratic presidential nomination. Johnson's popularity had disappeared based on his dismal showing in the New Hampshire primary against the lesser-known anti-war Democrat Eugene McCarthy. As a result, Johnson announced in a historic way that he would neither seek nor accept the candidature of his party, ushering in a new era in American politics. Within three months, both Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy would be assassinated. In August, rioters clashed with police during the recognition convention in Chicago. The New Left, a coalition of hippies, civil rights activists, and Marxists, opened up new possibilities in progressive politics but failed to unite around a single candidate in 1968. This failure, combined with a conservative backlash, ensured the election of Richard Nixon, who had risen from the ashes of his 1960 defeat, having repackaged himself as a new Nixon who could end the war and bring law and order to the country. Johnson retired to Texas in disgrace, grew his hair out like an aging hippie, and in the act of willful suicide, resumed smoking. His 60-a-day cigarette habit had caused a near-fatal heart attack in 1956, and in 1973, he would die from another massive heart attack at the age of 64, just as the Vietnam War peace accords were being signed. Lyndon Johnson's domestic achievements were overshadowed and undermined by the Vietnam War, and he damaged the Democratic Party by severing its base in the South. The emerging Republican majority, emphasizing law and order, had become the political party of the wealthy Eastern establishment and the working class, shattering the 35-year coalition FDR had created between labor unions, the South, and the middle class. Although history has begun recognizing Johnson's domestic accomplishments, the social and political divisions unleashed by the Vietnam War shattered the optimism once so prevalent in the American spirit. They unleashed furies from both the left and the right, fierce political fissures that remain with us today. Share your thoughts and remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more terrifying stories.